Good afternoon. We begin our today's session, and I'm delighted to present you our today's honorable guest, uh, Mr. Philip Griffiths, uh, who is a career diplomat from New Zealand, and he came today uh, to have a talk with us on uh, questions of arms trade and prevention of uh, difficult arms trade and uh, questions of security and uh, uh, other world uh, security issues. Mr. Uh, Griffiths, is a, as I said, is a Korean diplomat from New Zealand. He served in uh, embassies in Bonn, Tehran, Vienna. He had many important uh, posts in the uh, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and Trade of New Zealand. Uh, in 2004-2008, uh, Mr. Griffiths served as New Zealand's ambassador in Warsaw, also accredited in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. In 2008-2010, uh, uh, Mr. Griffiths was director uh, in chief executive's office in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade in New Zealand. In 2011-2012, uh, uh, he was uh, New Zealand's ambassador and permanent representative uh, in Vienna. Also credited to Hungary, Slovakia, and Slovenia. And now we are in Berkeley, uh, receiving Mr. Griffiths here at our university uh, as head of secretariat of Vassanar Regions uh, in Vienna. This is a very important uh, treaty. Probably you haven't heard about it yet, but I'm sure that you will now find out many uh, important things about. Uh, security issues uh, in the world which deals with arms trade. And I also would like to read here Mr. Sergei Zanetin, Senior Officer of Wasserman Conventions, also in Vienna. Uh, now I give the floor to our distinguished guest and we will wait for the presentation for a few minutes. Okay, okay. okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Vice-Rector Silantiev, for your introduction. It's a great pleasure for me to be here at the um, Moscow State University for International Relations. Um, I always welcome opportunities to speak about the objectives and recent activities of the Vasana arrangement, especially to students who may one day carry responsibility for the issues that we will discuss today. Um, the Vasana arrangement is uh, not very transparent from its title. Um, it's, a, it's a political group of currently 41 countries who have committed themselves to sharing information and cooperating to try to ensure responsibility and um, in the transfer of conventional arms and dual-use goods and technologies. So um, I'd like to thank you all very much for coming. Um, I'm sorry that I, I can't speak in Russian. Um, I speak a little Polish, but so I understand some Russian, maybe some words, but not very much. But the language of the Vasana arrangement is English. Um, so I hope you can understand my Kiwi accent. Uh, my, my New Zealand accent. Um, but there will be an opportunity for questions and answers um, after my presentation. Um, so please feel free to ask me any, anything that's on your mind. Um, I think this issue of conventional arms transfers has um, some topicality at the moment because of events that are, occur are occurring in different regions of the world, but also because um, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the text of an arms trade treaty earlier this month. Um, and I think this uh, action by the General Assembly by an overwhelming majority of members of the United Nations demonstrates the shift that has occurred in the international debate on export controls. Most countries now accept the need to regulate trade in conventional arms in order to prevent their diversion to un unauthorized uses, users including terrorists, with harmful consequences for international peace and security 
as well as human suffering. So um, the Vasana arrangement has been working to strengthen export controls on, and international cooperation on conventional weapons and related dual use goods and technologies since 1996 when it was set up with 33 founding members, including the Russian Federation. Since 1996, the membership has expanded to 41, and the latest addition was Mexico in 2012. We currently have a number of countries which are at varying stages of applying to join, as well as um, a larger number of outreach partners with whom we have uh, a regular dialogue. Um, perhaps just to explain that the Secretariat of the Vasana Arrangement, of which I am the head, um, is a small unit which is based in, permanently in Vienna. Um, uh, I have three senior officers to help me, as, um, and Sergei Zamyatin, um, on whom I rely a great deal, is uh, the senior officer responsible for coordination and, and administration. The Vasana arrangement is the only international export control regime that deals with conventional weapons. Uh, it complements and reinforces other uh, export control regimes which are concerned with weapons of mass destruction and their means of delivery. The Vasana arrangement's purpose is to contribute to regional and international security and stability by promoting transparency and greater responsibility in transfers of conventional arms and dual-use goods and technologies, thus preventing destabilizing accumulations. After the terrorist events of the 11th of September 2001, the purpose of the Vasana arrangement was ex expanded to include the importance of export controls in the global fight against terrorism. As I said earlier, the Vasana arrangement represents a political rather than a treaty-based commitment. Firstly, our participating states have committed themselves to impose fully effective national export controls on conventional weapons and dual-use goods and technologies. Export control means that a license is required uh, prior to the export of the controlled item. Secondly, our members have undertaken to report to one another about their transfers and denials of certain items. Through this transparency, the Vasana arrangement contributes toward promoting greater responsibility and consistency in transactions involving these items. The arrangement does not attempt to introduce collective decision making into national, ex into national export control practices. The preservation of national discretion in all matters relating to the implementation of export controls is a fundamental principle of the Vasana arrangement's work. All decisions whether to grant an export license for a particular item to a particular country or to deny an application are taken by the individual members. As I see it, the, the Vasana arrangement's role is to set the standard against which our members make these decisions, and also to provide an opportunity for peer review. Um, I, I should stress that the Vasana arrangement does not have a blacklist of prohibited export destinations, and it does not seek to impede bona fide commercial, bona fide transactions. So I talked earlier about transparency uh, this is achieved by the exchange of information of both a specific nature and a, a general nature. The specific information exchange is a mechanism by which our members notify one another about their decisions to approve or to deny exports of controlled goods and technologies to non-members in accordance with the agreed reporting guidelines. Under the Vasana arrangement, Notifications of arms transfers, currently covering eight cat categories, are mandatory. Seven of the categories are derived from the United Nations Register of Conventional Arms. And in 2013, the Vasana arrangement added an eighth category, 
namely small arms and light weapons, including man portable air defense systems or man pads. Vasana notifications are submitted more frequently, that is twice a year, and include more information than is required under the United Nations reporting system, uh, including that proposed under the new arms trade treaty text. As far as dual use goods and technologies are concerned, our members notify transfers of sensitive items and they report license denials of all dual use items. Denial reporting helps to bring to the attention of all members efforts to gain access to sensitive items that in the view of one denying participating state may undermine the objectives of the arrangement. Such information is shared um, in order to prevent inadvertent undercuts. The notifications are submitted uh, by means of the arrangement's dedicated secure electronic network, um, the Vasana Arrangement Information System, to which all our members have 24-hour access. I can go into this in a little more detail, but basically all the notifications of exports and denials are entered into the database and all our 41 members have access to that database so they can see which items have been exported by their partners and which items have, uh, where, have, where export permits have been denied. Through this uh, transparency, decisions by one participating state are open to scrutiny by their WA partners. Should they wish, other participating states may follow up a particular notification by seeking further discussion on the rationale behind it. And uh, for this purpose, we have a regular calendar of meetings um, throughout the year. Um, we have a, a plenary uh, which takes all the decisions. Uh, it meets in December. And we ha the main subsidiary body is called the General Working Group, which meets formally twice a year. And um, it's at these meetings uh, that the opportunity is provided for this exchange of information and views. We also have an experts meeting, uh, which looks at the control lists, which I'll come to in a minute, and uh, a meeting of licensing and enforcement officers, uh, which enables practitioners to share their experience and their lessons learned um, with their colleagues from other participating states. Participants also share their assessments of the risks associ associated with transfers um, through a process called the General Information Exchange, uh, which includes a regional views exercise intended to facilitate a discussion of destinations where the risks of destabilizing accumulations are judged to be the greatest. Drawing on this information, Vasana participants examine flows of arms or sensitive goods to regions of conflict or concern in order to enable their licensing authorities to identify potentially destabilizing acquisitions of armaments or to determine which destinations might be considered unsuitable. In this way, our members are trying to develop a, a common understanding of the risks associated with such transfers and to assess the scope for coordinating national policies to, to combat these risks. So whether in the form of the specific notifications or the exchange of information of a more general nature, um, this is one of the pillars, one of the three pillars, I would say, of the Vasana arrangement. The second pillar comprises the control lists, uh, which identify the items that should be subject to national licensing. Uh, we maintain two control lists, the mun munitions list and the dual use list. And both lists are updated regularly to keep pace with technological advances, with market trends, and with changes in the international security situ situation. Updating the lists is highly technical work. To start with the dual use list, this comprises around 1,000 items currently 
including 170 items on the sensitive list and 80 items on the very sensitive list. That, that gives you an idea of the um, categories of items. The munitions list has close to 300 items in 22 categories. And uh, both these lists can be found on the Vasana Arrangement website. The details are in the brochure that you have. When uh, the arrangement approves changes to the control lists, um, each participating state has to incorporate the controls into its national legislation according to its own administrative procedures. In 2003, um, the participating states agreed to introduce a catch-all pr principle. This allows participating states also to control non-listed dual-use items when they are intended for destinations subject to UN arms embargoes or other binding embargoes and are for military end use. Catch-all applies when licensing authorities inform the exporter or when the exporter is aware that items in question are intended for military end use. For example, for the manufacture or repair of military equipment. And the third pillar of the Vasana arrangement, um, apart from information exchange, the control lists, is uh, what I would call our non-binding best practices. These are documents that have been developed as guidance for both governments and industry in respect of national legislation and practices. And a lot of effort goes into developing the, these best practices, um, which our participating states endeavor to implement. In 2011, three new best practices were adopted covering internal compliance programs for industry, the re-export of conventional weapons systems, and transportation of conventional arms. In respect of internal compliance programs, uh, industry is the first line of defense in the implementation of any country's export control regulations. In this context, industry can be broadly defined to include service providers such as research institutions and universities. Internal compliance programs help to ensure that exporters do not inadvertently violate national laws and thereby subject themselves to costly sanctions and wider reputational damage. And our members have agreed to encourage exporters to develop and implement internal compliance programs uh, by various means, for example, by making an ICP a condition for the granting of a general license um, and by reviewing ICPs submitted by industry and assessing compliance. Such assessments may include on-site inspections. The best practice guidelines contain a number of additional elements for internal compliance programs. Re-export um, is um, also um, covered by a best practice guideline um, uh, and is, is a very important uh, issue to be addressed. Um, it, the full title is Best Practice Guidelines on Subsequent Transfer or Re-export Controls for Conventional Weapons Systems, contained in Appendix 3. Appendix 3 covers battle tanks, armored combat vehicles, large caliber artillery systems, military aircraft, or unmanned aerial vehicles, military and attack helicopters, warships, missile or missile systems, and small arms and light weapons, including man pads. Our participating states have agreed that government to government agreements, um, to ensure that government to government agreements um, end use and end user assurances and or export licenses will contain a re-export clause. Um, so this is a clause requiring prior authorization from the original exporting government before an item may be re-exported and an undertaking that the goods will be used only for declared purposes and will not be transferred to another internal end user. 
Participating states have also agreed to ensure that re-export to third parties of weapon systems produced under license from another country is consistent with government-to-government -government agreements, end-use assurances, and the export license under which the production technology was transferred. Uh, just very briefly, um, also in 2011, we updated the elements for objective analysis and advice concerning potentially destabilizing accumulations of conventional weapons. Um, this is a checklist, really, intended to help national licensing authorities when they evaluate export license applications. So it, it advises licensing officers to take into account such factors as a possible impact on the regional balance, non-proliferation concerns, the political and economic situation in the recipient country, and the risk of reverse engineering and diversion. The, the latest revision also contains language um, encouraging participating states to consider how arms transfers could influence civil armed conflicts and whether a receiving state has an effective physical security system for weapons storage. Some of these issues are um, uh, currently being co confronted in some parts of the world. So there are a number of other best practice documents, including end-use assurances, control of non-listed dual-use items, exports of small arms and light weapons, arms brokering legislation, and export controls for man pads. Um, all these best practice documents are publicly available, so uh, any country can um, access them through the Vasana Arrangement website. We at the moment, we have a number of other new best practices documents under discussion. I might um, just proceed. Uh, um, man pads are particularly topical. Um, and um, the work that the Vasana arrangement has done on man pads has pr proven useful in some other uh, to some other regional organizations as well. Um, just a word about intangible transfers of technology, since we're in a university. Um, the Vasana arrangement is also concerned with um, dual-use technology, not just goods. Um, and so we have a, a best practices document for implementing intangible transfers of technology. This was adopted in 2006. 25 years ago, technology transfers nearly always involved physical transfer of paper across national borders. But today, the same information can be transferred electronically or orally in an environment where there are no borders or border controls in the traditional sense. The Vasana arrangement defines technology as specific information necessary for the development, production, or use of a product. It may take the form of technical data, such as blueprints, plans, diagrams, or manuals, or it may be technical assistance, such as instruction, skills training, or consulting services. So whether in the form of goods, software, or services, technology can contribute to the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and conventional weapons programs. Even intangible transfers of technology require a license. And the Vasana Arrangement Best Practices set key requirements for effective export controls covering the intangible transfer of technology, including appropriate legislation, pre-export licensing procedures, and post-export monitoring. They emphasize the importance of preventative measures, such as targeted outreach to industry and academia, to ensure awareness of the need for intangible transfers of technology controls and the need for self-regulation and internal uh, control programs such as internal compliance programs. 
Just finally, a word about our outreach program. Export controls are most effective when they are widely applied. And the Vasana Arrangement's outreach efforts to interested non-member countries are aimed at encouraging adoption of strengthened export control programs. And a number of countries have, in fact, applied or do apply the Vasana Arrangement lists, even though they are not, they have decided not to become a formal member of the group. Broad acceptance of the Vasana Arrangement control lists and best practices worldwide enhances international and regional security and contributes to a more level playing field for everyone. Um, I should add that the United Nations Arms Trade Treaty, when it enters into force, um, you may know that it opens for signature on the 2nd of June and it requires 50 countries to ratify it before it enters into force. Um, but when it does so, it will require each state party to take measures necessary in order to have an effective and transparent national control system, including a national control list regulating the transfer of conventional arms covered by the treaty. So the Vassana arrangements work can also be relevant in this uh, context. In terms of specific outreach, country-specific outreach, um, a Vassana arrangement delegation paid a visit to New Delhi at the invitation of the Indian government last year. And earlier outreach visits were also made to China and to Israel. Um, since I assumed the role of Head of Secretariat uh, in June last year, I've traveled to the Netherlands, Korea, Japan, Israel, and now Russia to make presentation on, presentations on the Vassana Arrangements work to government officials and to industry representatives. Uh, and tomorrow I will be speaking at a seminar of uh, government officials from the Commonwealth of Independent States. Industry outreach is also a focus of, uh, an important focus of um, our effort. In the first instance, it's a national prerogative, but increasingly the transnational character of industry underscores the importance of engagement by international organizations like the Vassana Arrangement. Let me close by saying that, that our activities are driven by our member states. Whatever uh, we have achieved is the product of the engagement and cooperation that they have brought to information sharing and to cooperation. Their, continu their continued commitment and their ability to attract new partners will ensure that the Vasana arrangement continues to contribute to regional and international security by promoting transparency and responsibility in the transfer of conventional arms and dual use goods and technologies. So thank you very much for listening so, so patiently. And I hope it's been of interest to you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for your presentation. I think it adds a lot to the knowledge of our students uh, about security issues, uh, arms control, and control of exports. and. Um, other issues. Uh, before we go to the questions of students, I would like to ask myself, I understand uh, that uh, this arrangement works uh, within the countries participating in it, right? Yes. yes. My question would be, if, if a country says that it will supply uh, armaments to, to rebels in a country, for instance, Syria, uh, does, it, does the, this arrangement somehow works in this case, or it's out of the boundaries of the arrangement? Um, the members of the Vassana arrangement share information on transfers to non-members. So Syria is not a member of the Vassana arrangement, and so um, notifications of exports to Syria um, should be lodged into our database. Um, and so that database is accessible to all 51 countries, so um, that information is available. and. Um, if one of our members wishes to question any particular uh, export items or um, 
destinations, then it's free to do so within the Vasana arrangement context. We also have a general information exchange, so general uh, concerns about a particular region um, can be brought to the attention of all uh, members in that, in that context. Um, our, our discussions are confidential, so this is a like-minded grouping of countries that have made a political commitment to share information and to cooperate. So, um, you know, we, do, we don't issue press statements um, on, on particular countries or particular regions of the world. Um, it's primarily a forum that is available to our members to, um, to share information and to and share assessments of risks. Thank you. Okay, please, questions. <clears throat> Uh, I'm an assistant professor of the university and also I'm an expert of um, the Center for Political and Military Studies. It is a structure we created some months ago in partnership uh, University in partnership with um, the company Almazanti. Almazanti is uh, the largest, the biggest uh, producer of uh, missile defense systems, that has 300, has 400, etc. Um, and so I have probably two or three questions. Um, first of all, what about uh, legal uh, nature? Um, what about uh, legal nature of Vasina uh, arrangement? Uh, I mean, uh, your uh, relation with the United Nations, uh, your status uh, from the point of view of international law. Uh, uh, whether we can say that it is uh, truly international uh, our, our organization um, or it is uh, something like a plurilateral uh, regime uh, 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 which uh, represents uh, only one part of uh, arms market uh, exporters, only exporters. Uh, then uh, the other question is uh, about um, probably uh, uh, the very important treaty, which was signed recently in March on um, arms uh, trade, uh, control on arms trade, uh, what will change uh, uh, after the assignment of this treaty in the world and especially in your, uh, in your activity? And uh, the third question is about uh, uh, proliferation. You know that, for example, if we take uh, nuclear uh, non-proliferation region, it is uh, Pakistan who is uh, the largest uh, violator of this region. If you take into account, I don't know, missile uh, pro uh, non-proliferation region is, uh, for example, Iran and probably North Korea, which are the uh, biggest uh, violators of this region. What about conventional arms? What country? is uh, the biggest, uh, probably, proliferator, a uh, violator of your region, though it would be the country which is not uh, the member of uh, Vasana arrangement, Central. Uh, thank you, thank you for those questions which are very, um, very relevant. Um, not so easy to answer, perhaps, in all respects, but um, the legal status of the, the Vasana arrangement, uh, we have no formal relationship to the United Nations. Um, we, we're, as I said, we're a grouping of like-minded countries, an intergovernmental grouping. Um, whether you call it an international organization or a plurilateral um, group, uh, I don't think matters, matters quite so much. We are open, that's the important thing. We are open to new members um, on a, on a non-discriminatory basis. Uh, any country which complies with our membership criteria is um, free to apply to join and the application is considered. Um, so although uh, there is no treaty-based commitment, our, country, our members have made a political commitment, um, and, uh, 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 which um, I think it, it is, is a very important element of international cooperation in this area. Um, yes, it's true that we don't cover the entire 
arms market. There are some very important arms producers and exporters who are not members of the Vasana arrangement. Um, and we are in dialogue with them. Um, we, we, the, our member states are trying to act by example, I think, to, to, to lead by example, um, to, to um, demonstrate the benefits of sharing information and cooperating in this area, and to encourage others to strengthen their export controls uh, and to, sh to share similar purposes and objectives as the Vasana arrangement. Um, the arms trade treaty, uh, I think that's a good, uh, a good question. Um, as I said earlier, I think it demonstrates a shift in the international debate. Previously, a number of countries were inclined to question the necessity for export controls. And, and some were even inclined to see export controls as a means of denying access to advanced uh, items and technology to developing countries. But I think the international debate has moved now beyond that point. And uh, there is widespread in international concern about illi illicit, the illicit trade in conventional weapons, um, you know, which cause uh, more suffering on a daily basis around the world uh, than weapons of mass destruction have. Um, I think the Vasana arrangement could, uh, it, it's up to our member states to consider the implications of the arms trade treaty, obviously, for, for the Vasana arrangement. But I could imagine that there may be increased interest on the part of non members in our control lists and also in our best practice documents, guidelines. Because under the ATT, each country has to develop its own control list. And um, the UN Register of Conventional Arms is the, is the kind of baseline. Uh, but the Vasana arrangement lists go well beyond that. Um, so it may be that the Vasana arrangement's work over the last 18 years could be of more interest to other countries in the, in the post-arms trade treaty context. Um, on proliferators, I, I can't really uh, comment on this um, in terms of specific countries. The, the Vasana arrangement is not directed at, at uh, specific countries. Um, I, I would say that um, there, uh, there are some very significant arms producers and exporters who are not, not within the Vasana arrangement and therefore not bound by the same disciplines. <coughs> And uh, we continue to be open and we continue to reach out and to try to encourage um, st strengthening of national export controls in, in line with the Vasana arrangement purposes. Um, and I think the Vasana arrangement can consider itself to have been e effective and successful in its role over the, uh, over the years since 1996 when it was first um, uh, implemented. Uh, but uh, Sergei may have something to add. Okay, thank you. Пожалуйста, please, questions. Thank you for your speech. Uh, I'm, my name is Alexander, I'm a second year student. Uh, so from your uh, presentation, from your speech, I concluded that um, the greatest concern of the Vasana arrangement is to uh, put the um, arms trade under control, uh, both under control and to make it more transparent. Uh, but um, my question is concerning the certain degree of secrecy of this information. Uh, uh, will this not... Um, create certain dangers to uh, both financial transactions and uh, transportation of arms, uh, especially in some problem region. Uh, isn't this information which is shared uh, now on the international le level uh, affect uh, on the security of, of these processes? Thank you. Um, I, I think um, the goal is to, to maximize transparency so, um, and to enable individual licensing officers to make informed decisions 
you know, so I mean, there are obviously security sensitivities, commercial sensitivities, and so on. But um, our, our, our participating states have agreed to share this information um, and, and uh, to discuss it where, um, you know, where they are, questions are raised by other, by other members. Um, so the, there is um, a high level of transparency within the Vasana arrangement. Um, in terms of transparency outside the Vasana arrangement, I think that's really a national prerogative. Some, some countries publish their export um, licensing decisions. Um, so uh, that, that's really a, a national um, uh, prerogative. Um, the Vasana arrangement is a forum for sharing it, the information within the membership. You know, I'm a student, so I'm a student as well. <laughs> uh, you mentioned, you said that um, countries join this arrangement on, um, like, uh, they do it um, on their own effort. But what if we talk about uh, those countries that got the right to uh, development, to sovereignty in the 70s, 70s and 80s? I mean, those weak countries, developing countries. Does this uh, Western arrangements anyhow? So, does it anyhow um, interfere with their right to development? I mean, uh, in terms of security, in terms of uh, controls on ITTM, everything. Does it anyhow interfere with their right? Does it kind of make it le uh, less uh, efficient? Um. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, um, I, I, that's certainly not the purpose of the Vasana arrangement. No. Um, um, the Vasana arrangement is concerned about possible diversion of, uh, of conventional arms um, systems or sensitive dual use goods and technologies to unauthorized users. So it, the, own, the responsibility is really on the recipient country to demonstrate that it has effective means of preventing um, such diversion. For example, if it has its own export control system, which is um, operating effectively. Um, and our members um, provide a lot of assistance nationally to other countries to develop and strengthen their export control systems. So a lot of um, programs are offered by our participating states to developing countries to assist them in um, meeting the requirements to become recipients of, of some of these items. You know. um, so I think you could look at it that it's an incentive. It's an incentive for developing countries to um, implement effective export controls to enhance their access to, to sensitive goods and technologies. Um, the items which are covered by the Vasana arrangement are only those that you know, have implications for conventional weapons systems or may be used um, in the production or advancement of conventional weapons. I would like also to thank you for your report. It was very interesting. And uh, I would like to ask uh, you, you say that uh, you share uh, the information about uh, export operations. and. Uh, do publish it, who has uh, the access to this uh, Western information system database? This is the first question. And the second, uh, if a participant of uh, this arrangement violates the arrangement, what is the responsibility of the violator? Thank you. Um. First of all, um, only our participating states have access to the Vasana Arrangement Secure Information System, um, which is um, protected at a high level of confidentiality. So officials from, re re authorized um, users from our participating states have access to it. And typically these would be people who are involved in licensing decisions. Um, for example, if a, if a licensing officer is confronted with a particular export and um, 
um, it can be difficult to assess full, the full implications um, just on a, in a, an individual in an isolated basis. But the Vasana uh, Arrangement Information System enables that licensing officer to see um, how such items have been treated by other participating states to particular destinations. So um, that's, that's the answer to the first question. Um, the second question, um, we're, we're a consensus-based group. We, we, all our decisions are taken by consensus. Uh, that reflects the like-minded nature of the grouping and the political commitment that they've made. We, we haven't so far had a situation where um, you know, a, a problem has had to be addressed of that kind. Um, and I hope, I hope we, we don't. Uh, don't have any. Uh, we don't have any enforcement mechanism in the decision device and arrangement, so everything is subject to voluntary uh, compliance. And the Secretariat doesn't have any functions to monitor national compliance uh, of um, its participating states uh, with the principles uh, agreed in the concept of the Vassan arrangement. So we are a very light structure as compared to some other full-fledged international organizations. We don't have muscles to enforce the, um, the, the, the principles and the decisions uh, taken uh, by the Vassan countries. But we can monitor and uh, uh, of course, uh, but silently. And again, as uh, has been mentioned by Ambassador Griffith, it's a prerogative of each individual participating states to make their own judgment, uh, and then uh, they have a right to bring their concerns to other partners uh, when they meet together in Vienna. special procedure for uh, accepting new member into the organization and uh, are there any special requirements for the country which uh, have, has shown uh, desire to enter the uh, Yes, we have um, specific criteria which um, need to be satisfied and um, first of all the country um, should have an effective, efficient system of export controls, and uh, that needs to be, to be demonstrated. Um, they should be a, an, a producer and exporter, obviously, of items of relevance to the Vasana arrangement. And they should demonstrate a um, high level of commitment to non-proliferation goals, you know, but um, our members would take into account which international treaties and so on they are they are parties to. Um, I think, uh, but, uh, but of those criteria, the, the most important one is that they can demonstrate that they have a, an efficient functioning export control system that is capable of remaining up to date with the Vassana arrangement control lists. Cooperation with such non-European non countries as China and India, and uh, do they want to join their organization in the future? Thank you. Um, yes, uh, as I said, we 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 have an outreach uh, program, and uh, there have been out bus and arrangement outreach visits to Beijing and also to New Delhi um, at the invitation of the respective governments. Um, so this, this dialogue is ongoing. Um, we have two events each year, basically, in which we brief all our outreach partners, one on the results of the December plenary and the other on the latest changes to our control lists. And um, so um, this information is shared, and we are open to any questions which our outreach partners may have. So basically, we're... Um, we're keeping our, our door open. Um, uh, and I think uh, in the case of India, I think um, there have been public statements by in, uh, India that it um, is interested in, in joining the various export control regimes. 
So um, uh, I think our dialogue with India has been helpful in terms of um, further development of the Indian export control list, control lists. So, um, so th this will be ongoing. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, please. Thank you, Mr. Griffiths. I'm a sophomore and I study Japanese uh, at this university. My question is about Japan. As far as I know, Japan is not allowed to have any uh, military forces. And uh, how does Japan participate in the activity of your organization? Thank you. Um. Uh, I mean, um, Japan is an active participant in the Vasana arrangement, and I, I, you know, I can't comment on uh, Japanese national legislation um, in terms of you know, um, its, um, its status in relation to military exports, but it's a very important um, exporter of dual-use items and technologies, of course, uh, given the diversity of the Japanese economy. It's a very active and constructive player in the Vasana arrangement and is also very active in outreach in, in the Asian region in helping its partners um, to reinforce and, and strengthen their export controls. Thank you. Any more questions? Well, there were many. <laughs> yes. yes, that's very good. Um, I'm very encouraged. Um, very, very, uh, very good questions too. So um, please allow me to thank you. I, um, I really enjoyed uh, this session. And um, I'm grateful that there are so many well-informed um, participants. And on behalf of our university and students who are present here, let me thank you for coming to our university and giving this talk to students. I'm sure they have uh, more uh, things to explore. Maybe someone will write a thesis <laughs> on what's in our arrangements. Uh, and uh, we welcome you on any other occasions. You're in Moscow. And thank you. Thank you very much for these presentations. Спасибо. <laughs>